in the news cut content. We're going to cover Elsa versus Garfield, how it went in the novels. Unlike what we saw in the anime, there was quite a bit more to the initial fight between Elsa and Garfield. Elsa was a lot more tactical when it came to how she approached her opponent, and because of this it forced Garfield to have to rely on a partial transformation. Not only that, but there was also a whole nother level of planning from Subaru and the others that we weren't even made aware of. Yeah? So, let's take a look at all that and more as we go through the first half of cut content for episode 47. Alright, but first! But first <laughs> this video is sponsored by Surgeon. Gotcha! I've been fucking trying to bay for the butt first, you know, segue into the app for a while, and we finally got it. Guys, get your Surfshark shit, but I don't think it's available because this is three years ago. Anyways, let's keep going. Let's get back to the video. Episode 47, Part 1. The Final Day of Roswell Manor. Covering Chapter 1 of Volume 15 of- The Final Day of the Roswell Manor? <laughs> Wait, what? That's what the- Seven part one, the final day of Ro Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, the manor is we are having a huge fight in there. Yeah, I it's looking like the manor itself might just get destroyed by the end. I can see it like Elsa and Garfield going crazy. There's a fucking guilty low in the building and a hippo with matey. Yeah, I could see it. Oswald Manor, covering chapter one of volume 15 of the light novel. Before we get started with Garfield's fight with Elsa, there was first a cutscene on the way to the man- Like this entire mansion will be destroyed? Oh no! Mansion that went to- We're gonna be fucking homeless after this! Where are we gonna stay? Show how Subaru and the others were planning their approach. It was a whole debrief of what to do and what to expect once they got there. The first topic was the inevitable reunion of Frederica and Garfield. As we find out, it had been- Maybe we should just go to the sanctuary. <laughs> At least the sanctuary has like a place where people can stay. Now, but now maybe we can like somebody in like the uh the fucking uh the village, right? The village can like house us for a bit. I don't know. What are we gonna do about this? Ten years since the two last saw each other, and because Garfield was too busy resenting Frederica for abandoning him, not once did he ever read any of the letters that she'd sent to him. Of course, now he knew that she was only trying to make a place for him. So, it was for that reason that Subaru knew their reunion was sure to be a touching one. That being the case, he also felt the need to stress that time was limited. He needed Garfield to know that there wasn't going to be much of an opportunity to make up with each other. Reason being that Petra and Rem required near immediate assistance. Their inability to fight back made it almost certain they would die unless someone came to help them. I wonder if Petra's ever gonna be combat ready. I don't think she needs to be. It'd be hilarious if she learns how to be though. So, if that person was going to be Garfield, then Subaru wanted to make sure he was in the right state of mind and body to do it. One thing to note is that Garfield's body still wasn't fully recovered from what had happened earlier. Yes, Amelia did use her healing magic to fix any physical injuries, so he's but that right didn't now. help to recover any of the blood, mana, or stamina he'd lost. It forced Garfield to have to rely on his Blessing of the Earth Spirit. If he was able to make use of that- What's the Blessing of the Earth Spirit? I thought it was just Blessing of the Earth. But now there's a spirit attached to the end? Okay. Then his body would be fully restored by the time he got to the mansion. The only issue was that in order for the blessing to take effect, his feet needed to be making contact with the ground. Okay. Something that wasn't possible if he was sitting in the carriage. So what Garfield did was rather than sit in the wagon all the way to Sanctuary, he instead ran alongside it so his feet were touching the ground all the way there. Of course, he was holding onto the windowsill so as to not use too much energy. <laughs> That's like a fun... <laughs> They should have like a rope and drag Garfield like it's like a you're like in water and you have a boat and you fucking have a rope and you know you you, you it goes like, and then you have like a little surfboard to do it but Garfield's blessing of the earth spirit contact with the earth causes regeneration got it but just the sight of seeing him be dragged along yeah like this right now <laughs> was sure to make any bystanders think that he was trying to force his way in maybe he should be fucking running he she he should he should be like fucking uh pulling the cart yeah that's even funnier imagine garfield is like a fucking horse right now that's like land dragon that's like pulling the cart think that he was trying to force his way in it also didn't help that this was getting close to triggering Juice. subaru's ptsd Juice. as much as he knew it was impossible Subaru couldn't help but imagine Garfield getting dragged into the wheel much like how Juice did. But that was likely to be more damaging to the carriage than it was to him. Anyway, with Garfield's job now established, Otto was next to receive his, and he was put in charge of evacuating the villagers. 
You see, Subaru knew that even if they weren't the targets for assassination, Elsa and Meili certainly weren't beyond killing them. Oh my goodness, Elsa. I just... Oh, and... This is a little... It, is this a tiny guilty low? I think it is, right? I thought it was a bat for a second. No, this is a tiny guilty low plushie, I think. So, while Subaru would be focused with getting Beatrice, Otto would take Petra to the village and start clearing out the people there, thus giving everyone an idea of what they needed to do. Moving on to the start of Garfield's fight with- Gore warning, okay. Elsa. Immediately after she stepped in to interrupt the sibling reunion, she also threw one of her knives straight towards Garfield. It was an attack that definitely would have split the head of any normal person. <laughs> Fatality! An attack that is this Mortal Kombat? Definitely would have. Oh the my head God! Person. But because this was Garfield, he knew that this was something that he could easily block against. So he decided the best course of action was to deflect it into the ceiling so that Elsa wouldn't be able to use it anymore. As she pulled out a spare to replace the one she'd lost, Elsa charged towards Garfield in a posture that indicated she was going for his ankles. That much was obvious just by looking at her. But this was actually nothing more than a tactical diversion. Hmm. You see, the knife Elsa had thrown earlier actually had a string tied to it. Oh, allowing tricky. her to yank it from the ceiling and catch Garfield in a pincer attack of blades from tricky, the Tricky, tricky! The instant Frederica yelled to warn him it was coming, Garfield had already transformed his arm into its larger beast version. He then swung it with so much speed and force that even Elsa was caught off guard by it. It was a moment of hesitation that gave Garfield the opportunity to dodge the knife coming from behind him. He was also able to shift his body in a way that positioned himself to counter Elsa. So, the end result was a block of Elsa's attack with a heavy swing of his shield. A parry strong enough to send her flying backwards and deal damage on impact. It's still probably one of the most epic kicks in ReZero, bro. Heavy swing of his shield. The fucking... A parry... The stomp... To like, that, what was that stomp? I always think about that. Elsa was like running in, Reinhardt like does a stomp on the ground, and it's just like... Everyone is just like stunned. Maybe it's just brute force, and the sheer impact of the stomp just made Elsa just stop moving, and then a boom, a kick. Very strong enough to send Oof. her flying backwards and deal damage on impact. As Frederica watched her brother fight so capably, she couldn't help but start to admire just how strong he'd become. It was clear that he'd spent the last 10 years working hard to do so. Yeah, I mean, the last time, again, she was only four, right? They were like, like, a, like a Ooga Booga, like a little, little baby, right? But now, he's only 14, but he's a, he's a beast man, so he's a big boy now. A realization that was starting to move her. That said, she wasn't the only one who now held Garfield's combat ability in fairly high regard. The assassin he'd just flung like a ragdoll found herself in appreciation of it as well. I think if anything, like we've seen how strong Elsa is, right? Garfield... More and more, just like, damn, he's going to be really one of our strongest soldiers. We've seen how strong and formidable he was before leading up to this, and now fighting with Elsa 1v1, if he wins, like, I'm going to be, <clears throat> I'm going to be using this example. And if Elsa actually dies, I'm going to be using this example just to fucking meme on Reinhardt, saying Reinhardt could never. His recent display of power was something she, too, couldn't help but compliment. The fact she was even standing after what she'd just been hit by, though, was really more like a testament to her own power. So, this was what led Garfield to the conclusion that he needed to fight her alone. When Frederica insisted that she stay and help, it wasn't just Garfield that told her that she'd just be in the way. Even Elsa said a few words that went to imply Damn. her presence would be more of a hindrance than a benefit. It was a point made painfully clear just by watching the two continue to fight each other. Alright, Garfield is significantly stronger than Frederica. Now, we do have these gauntlets. I wonder if we didn't have it, it'd be different, but seemingly Garfield just on another level. What she saw was a seamless flow of movement similar to that of a dance. A constant exchange of dodges and blocks that left Frederica zero opportunity to- <laughs> This is still so fucking crazy to me. I don't care if Elsa's playing with their food. Ain't no way a fucking neat 17-year-old kid could just move like fucking Jackie Chan here. That left Frederica Holy zero shit! To interfere. While holding a Romji's club, remember that the crazy thing, he's doing this while holding a Romji's like five ton club. Box that left Frederica zero opportunity to interfere. The only thing she could do was stand back and watch as anything else required an immense buildup of courage. Now, once Garfield had caught the knife with his mouth like how we saw in the anime, he had I expect that to be on Elsa's neck. It just feels like this is how Elsa should end. 
by foreshadowing from Mady in break time. Actually made sure to shatter it with his teeth before letting it go. This time ensuring Elsa wouldn't be able to get it back like how she did before. This gave Garfield the advantage since Elsa now needed to create space to rebalance herself. But it was as she was in the process of doing that that Garfield managed to grab her braid and give her face the Helsing treatment. I can't believe he dragged her face along the wall, man. What the anime didn't show Ooh. here, though, was that Garfield believed the battle was as good as finished now. His thoughts raced as he believed the only thing left to do was snap her neck, cave in her skull, and oh. grind her face against the wall until there was nothing left. But her face only had just a couple scratches, like some dust marks. A great plan in concept, for sure. But by allowing his mind to wander away from the battle, it gave Elsa an opening to attack that Garfield was only able to dodge out of sheer instinct. She- I think that like, Elsa probably healed her face. Right? There seems to be some sort of regeneration that she has going on from that one break time episode too. He then followed it up with a flurry of slices all while they were falling to the floor below. Had it not been for his intuition, then Garfield- I love this animation from Annie's. Look at that. The mobile game Elsa, I'm pretty sure, right? And just Garfield, just and the <laughs> random swipes <laughs> as they fall down. Peak animation, thank you. Had it not been for his intuition, then Garfield would have lost the fight right there. But by using his shield and beast-like instincts, he was able to parry most of the attacks and keep the damage to a minimum. Now, it wasn't entirely necessary for Garfield to continue engaging in combat right now. He'd already accomplished his primary objective of sending Frederica to get Rem. The problem was that he couldn't remember what his other objectives were. Yes, one of them did entail defeating Elsa, but there was also a backup plan for just in case he couldn't. One that he couldn't seem to remember. <laughs> Are you serious? He, he forgot the plan? This seems very important. This, this seems very important. Oh, okay, so Garfield forgot about another plan. So, to Garfield, the only reasonable approach now was to defeat Elsa himself. All right, well, that's interesting. There's another plan that might happen. Maybe it needs Garfield to execute, but he's forgotten about it. And now he's just going to take her down and maybe that plan will come to fruition in like an unexpected way. That seems like a like maybe it just like bails us out because we were never expecting it because we don't even remember it. That way, there wouldn't even be a need for a backup plan. OK. Now, while all that was happening, Super was doing his part to make things easier for Garfield. You see, the main reason he was trying to get everyone out of the mansion was so that Garfield could use his full power. He was sure that Garfield's superhuman strength would be on par with Elsa's. His main concern- <laughs> It's crazy that like we need to get to this point just to be on par with Elsa. Elsa is just so fucking cracked. I don't think we truly understand how strong Elsa is. For human strength would be on par with Elsa's. His main concern though was that Garfield's kind-heartedness would get the best of him. I mean, this was after all how Subaru had beat him. If Garfield held back out of concern for his allies getting in the crossfire, then the odds of him beating Elsa would be significantly less. So, Subaru was here to make sure that that wasn't a problem. Since Petra and Rem had already been taken care of, that meant the only remaining obstacle Beacon. was Beatrice. But the instant she gets clear from the mansion, that's when Garfield won't have to hold back anymore, putting him in peak condition to face off against Elsa. The hardest thing about dealing with Beatrice, though, was that she was even worse than Roswell when it came to the book. At least Roswell knew what he was doing. But yeah, Beak was just clinging on to a fucking empty promise, an empty prophecy that's not even real. Beatrice didn't seem to have the faintest idea. So the more she denied his help, the angrier he became, leading Subaru to realize that the past few loops had been a constant battle against his wrath. It was an anger that was always being shifted from one place to the next. Starting with himself in the trials, then shifting to the witches who played him. Moving to Garfield after what he'd done, then veering towards Roswell for being too stubborn to change. I feel like there's, a, again, just because you're angry doesn't mean it's bad. I feel like this is one of the best moments from Subaru's side, bro. Change. Finally ending up at Amelia who ref And like, this was amazing too. Because Subaru lashed at Amelia and called her out, that was like a key part of the conversation between Roswell and Amelia like an episode ago, before this one, right? ...used to accept herself for the love of those around her. While that was the last time that Subaru had felt this way, it was here in this moment that he now found himself angry at fate itself. Fate mentioned, type move. But I think that Subaru fucking calling Biko out isn't counterproductive, and I think it was actually on point. If anything, it felt right. Again, just because a sin is on display doesn't mean it's bad, right? Virtues can also be bad. 
everything in moderation. If you do something in excess, of course it's going to be bad, but there is a time and place for everything. He hated how the very concept was the reason for Beatrice's suffering. So he began to express that anger in a raging condemnation of the way she'd spent the past 400 years. Spent 400 years here and not a single time did you think about fucking rebelling. It's pretty funny. Biko, 400 fucking years. You did nothing. I guess she is just a little softy, huh? Maybe I'm being too hard on her. Eventually getting to the point of throwing doubts at Echidna. The instant he implied that she could have made a mistake, mm -hmm. Beatrice responded by asking if he would ever doubt his own mother. And yes, on fact, Super I think doubts his mother a lot because the mama seems to be an actual doo-doo. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't want to be mean to Subaru's mom, but come on now. Right? It's a very... Very specific character trait that the author has shown us. Mom is pretty much an airhead, right? When it comes to Subaru, there's this motherly instinct that makes her seem like a genius. But quite often, she says some shit and you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? It was a question to which Subaru immediately responded with yes. You see, there was a time back when Subaru was younger when his mother told him that a satellite was falling. <laughs> While there was in fact a satellite plummeting to Earth. The information his mom told him was that it was falling into their prefecture. <gasps> but the truth was that it was simply falling into the atmosphere. So when Subaru went back to school and told all his classmates how a satellite was going to hit there. Oh no, he said this. <laughs> mom. The boy who cried wolf, bro. Mom baited. He didn't, she didn't bait. It, these both are idiots. Both are idiots, bro. Oh my god. They all began to mock him for being so stupid. To make things worse, his mom didn't even remember that she'd made that mistake. <laughs> he, he, she fucking tells us fake news and the next day it's like, I don't remember what you're talking about. Holy shit. Holy shit. I'm, I'm, I'm the crazy one. Put me in a fucking straitjacket. So it was ever since then that Subaru refused to blindly believe anything his parents ever told him. Yes, good idea. Now, even after giving that whole story. Subaru still went on to recall all the arguments that ended with him and his dad in a fistfight. They were memories he felt would get Beatrice to better understand that doubting others was normal. But that was an idea that she simply couldn't comprehend. Yeah, Biko is just too naive, right? When you're super young, and Biko is not super young, but when you're super young, you think that your parents are absolute gods. Their words are the law and you cannot break them. They know exactly what they're doing. And if you question, you shouldn't question. But as you grow up, you start to realize that they're just humans and they make mistakes and they actually have no idea what they're doing either. And that's perfectly fine. And that's a very humbling and enlightening moment when you realize that, huh, my parents actually don't really have it all figured out. And that's fine. Biko just believes mother's words are absolute. That shit will not change until Subaru drags her out. I wonder if there's going to be a moment where Biko confronts a kid now about this. That would be amazing development. When Subaru finally got her to the point of asking him to be that person. He was so close. And I know what he was doing. It's like he doesn't want to say, yes, I am that person. That just like reinforces that whole bullshit prophecy, right? Which was never real. It was just a prank. And then he's going to say, I'm not that person. I don't need to be. That person doesn't exist. But I can be someone else. And I'm going to take you out. Like, like he just needed to cook for a little bit more. But Biku just kicked him out frame one. There was a bit more explanation for the reasoning behind his unexpected response. Yes, this question was directly linked to bringing an end to Beatrice's emptiness. But the approach she was taking to answering it wasn't the right one. It wasn't Subaru's job to tell her that he was that person. That's right. No. The whole purpose of the experiment was for her to choose. That's right. Since there wasn't any right answer to who that person was, Subaru could only surmise that Echidna wanted to see if Beatrice would be able to choose on her own. It was a single question that ended up leading her straight into 400 years of loneliness. So if Subaru was to come and say that he was that person. Defeats the purpose. It, it, it truly just like there's no lesson learned. Well, that would just end up making all that time meaningless. For Beatrice to truly break free from the shackles of fate, then she would need to make the decision all by herself. Choosing who that person was was something only she could do. That's why Subaru ended up responding the way he did. Now, so what are we waiting on right now? Well, Mady is fighting against Frederica outside, Garfield versus Elsa, Subaru and them are going to Roswell's secret exit, but Biko, until she can like make her own independent action, nothing will change. So uh, we're kind of fucked, aren't we? 
maybe we can gaslight her. We can just do enough yapping and convince herself to like uh chew Subaru out of her own volition, but this is gonna be tricky since she just kicked us out. Now, after he'd been ejected from the library and flung into the gardens, Subaru had a bit more to say to Meili. He was trying to convince her to look the other way. Seeing as how her schedule and plans had been completely ruined, Subaru would- This is interesting art. So this is how Rem is packaged on Frederica's back. Cause like in the anime, she just kind of like is facing the other way and is like bundled up. But something about this, I don't know. <laughs> Looks like fucking bondage gear and her attempted position. Attempted to get her to think that the best course of action was to simply retreat. It was obvious though that a crude reason like that wasn't enough to sway her. The fact that he could sense more demon beasts approaching from the yard was more than enough to prove that. How many more? So, after Subaru and the others had run into the mansion to escape her, Subaru decided to ask Otto if he could use his blessing of language to negotiate with the beasts. So he can talk to witch fiends, and of course he could, right? But I was wondering, like, is it just regular animals, witch fiends? What did the white whale say to him? Surprisingly, his ability actually works on them. Okay. But unfortunately, any conversation with them usually amounts to the demon beast just talking about how they're going to eat him. So there's, there's, like, there's no conversation. We can try to talk, but they're like, mmm, yummy, you're mine, I don't care, you're mine, I'm gonna eat you. So it really wasn't much of a conversation at all. I'd still love to hear it. It's just funny to just hear the thoughts of witch fiends. That said. The repel stone they had would keep them safe from all other beasts except for one. Guilty low. It just so happened that the one beast immune to it was the one they'd come across. Bringing us to the end of the parts in the mansion and the first half of the episode. As I'm sure you've noticed by now, it seems that ReZero has decided to skim on most of the fights in order to make room for the story. Which- Which I... think is the right idea. I would rather them cut out the fights in order to include more of important dialogue and, you know, that, that, that pretty much is the show, right? The fights are not that important. The fights are hype, right? They're exciting, but ReZero is not really about the fights, right? It's about the actual fucking plot and the extensive dialogue and the world building and the mystery surrounding it. So it's unfortunate, but if you're gonna have to choose one or the other, I agree. If you ask me, I honestly don't mind if it means the plot gets portrayed in the best way possible. Sure, it is a bit unfortunate to lose some of the more intense action scenes, but I'd much rather have a coherent story than one with only lots True. of action. Anyway, the next half of the episode will be out tomorrow. Okay. So be sure to come back then to see more about Amelia's unknowable present. Yes, sir! Now, before I go, I'd like- Surfshark, any news, get your 85% discount. I think the funniest thing that I learned from today's cut content is the fact Subaru's mom gaslit him into saying that the satellite was falling down and he fucking said that to everyone else and he came on and says mom it was only to the atmosphere and the mom said i don't even remember that it's just man i i knew that she was a smooth brain but this just <sighs> mom mom you, you really are special anyways please go give mr any like on the video here's the link check out his channel if you haven't and i'll see you on part two of this